G'day guys, uh, today I'm here with Matt Mitrick. How are you Matt? Yeah, Adam, how are you doing? I'm doing well. So we've got the man who is responsible for getting Git into TFS. How did you do that? Well, I'm not solely responsible, but no, I, I, we worked on a kind of partnership between teams. Uh, we, we worked with the community as well to get LibGit, which is the kind of the basis for Git inside of Visual Studio and uh, build some good tools on top of that. I uh, got it inside the platform and, you know, kind of we got now and then get support right inside TFS. So, so Brian Harry told me that mm -hmm. when he was convinced that it was a good direction to go, yep. that he commissioned you guys to build the best visual, best experience would be in Visual Studio. That's right. That's exactly right. We um, Did you think you could do that? I was confident. Yeah, I know we could. We, um, you know, we got a lot of experience building tools for developers um, in, you know, for our own version control system, um, and we took on the challenge of building Git inside Visual Studio and making the best class developer tools that we could. So, so it's it's already reasonably mature. Mm -hmm. It's not complete. There's still many things that you're missing. Is it the best experience already? No, of course not. I mean, nothing's ever mm -hmm. complete with software. There's always room for improvement mm -hmm. and. Um, you know, we've got a lot of work ahead of us to get to the best possible experience, but I think we're, we're well on our way. We're making a lot of good progress, and uh, we've already made it significantly more approachable to a lot of developers than it was previously. Okay, so I'd like to approach this from uh, guys that are familiar with TFS source control, which sure. is very popular. Um, what's, when should they choose Git, and how hard is it? So Git is, uh, you know, there's not a one-size-fits-all mm. for, for any given team when choosing anything with software. Mm. Um, I think, you know, you need to weigh the pros and cons. But uh, Git is a very good op option for teams um, that are small teams mm. in particular, uh, working on, you know, small to medium-sized code bases, um, you know, so in the tens to thousands of files, right? Many tens of thousands of files mm. are supported by Git, um, which I think falls under most development mm. projects. Um, teams that are distributed, it's a really good solution for. Um, Git, by its nature, everybody gets a copy of the repository on their own development machine with all of the history. Uh, they don't need to be connected to an intranet or VPN or anything like that to get their core work done. So, um, you know, if you work a distributed site or, work, or you work in, you know, distributed manner with your team, uh, it can be a really good option for that. So, Okay. Do you want to just take us through uh, sure, up and, up sure. and running? Let's take a look. So um, inside Visual Studio here, we're looking at the Team Explorer window. Um, and Team Explorer is kind of the hub for Team Foundation Server inside Visual Studio. Um, so you can see here you've got your list of projects. Um, and these two projects here happen to be um, Team Foundation version control projects. Uh, so we call that TFVC. That's the, um, team, that's the version control system we've had in TFS for, for since its creation. Um, we also added this um, ability to track local Git repositories in, in the 2013 release. And so what you're seeing here is kind of the, uh, the basic hub for all of your Git activity. So I'll start, let me make a new project here um, and, we'll, and we'll kind of see some of the experience here. So file new project and we'll say, yep, Windows application uh, one is It's fine. actually Visual Basic, you don't want that, I don't think. It doesn't matter for demo purposes, but I'll choose VC, I'll let that. I think we want MVC. All right, where is MVC right here? There we go, ASP.NET. And we'll check the add to source control box because we care about source control here. We're good professional developers. And uh, I'm gonna click OK. Let me pick MVC and hit OK. And so this is going to uh, go ahead and create the MVC application. And then once that's created, it's going gonna, it's gonna to prompt and say, hey, what, what version control system do you want to use here? Now, uh, Git is notorious for doing a lot of things in command line. Will the average developer have to do anything in command line? Uh, I wouldn't say won't ever have to do anything in command line. But to do your daily development work, um, developers won't need to use um, the command line. So for people that are more comfortable with a, a graphical interface, mm -hmm. um, you, you should be able to do 99% of what you need to do with Git right inside the IDE that you're, you know, already know and love. Um, Is there decisions that you've already taken where there's, uh, you know, people get themselves in a tangle in Git sometimes? Is there decisions that you've taken where you're, you've not put it in the GUI because you want it hidden away so people don't shoot themselves in a the foot? Well, I think... What we're trying to do is optimize the UI to have the most common experience and optimize for the day-to-day -day tasks. Keep the, um, 
you know, those, if you're using it 1% of the time, I don't really need it in the UI taking up space, making it more complicated. Um, so that's really the approach that we've taken is if you don't use it every day, if you probably don't need to see it every single day right in your experience. What we do provide, and you'll see after I create this here, is um, it's very easy to get from the UI to the command line in the cases where you do need it. So as you, you kind of venture out and learn more about the capabilities of Git beyond the basics, um, it's very easy to branch out and say, hey, I want to, um, you know, I need to do a rebase. This is an example of an advanced command. Um, you can just pop up in a command window, do whatever you need to do, jump back in VS to do your your your, your basic commands. So. And do you expect one day to put rebasing in the UI? I think eventually, yes. Um, I don't know if we will, I doubt we would ever build every single command because like you mentioned, there's a lot of kind of administrative type mm -hmm. things that, um, we don't think it necessarily has a place inside the UI, but um, you know that's our goal is to continue improving, continue um, building the features that developers really need uh, inside of Visual Studio. So okay. let's take a look. Um, let's create this Git project. So, so I pick Git uh, and say OK. And so just like that, it's already added my project into the Git repository. So we created that new web application. Um, and Team Explorer has now connected me uh, to that local repository, I can see that here where it says Web Application 1, and I'm on the home page. Um, you actually see a pretty cool prompt here where it says, hey, install some command tools. And, and this is one of those things where we're saying, hey, if you do need that advanced um, feature, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll show that to you and give you an easy way to acquire those tools. But for this purpose, let's say we don't really need those. Um, if I go over here to the changes page, this is the base uh, um, experience for kind of working with my in-progress work. Um, and I can see here, um, actually, I'm getting prompted to configure my username. So let's just, this is your computer, so I'll put Adam on there. And it's actually not mine. I stole it from my daughter. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll do it. Uh, there we go. So we'll put Adam in there. We use .au in Australia. Man. I know, but I like Tom, so. Um, we'll check this box. This will give me some cool images, hopefully, in there. But you're not, this isn't a real email address, so. We won't really see that. But anyway, I just configured Git there to, to know who, who we are as we're making changes. Um, so I've got my, my changes here. This is all the default pro, uh, project stuff. So let's say like um, adding the project. And we'll go ahead and commit that change. And, and what you'll see right away is this, if you have familiarity with other version control systems, this, this is going to be instantaneous. Watch, I click there. and. So much for instantaneous. You need to get a faster hard drive in your daughter's computer here, Adam. Does she need an SSD? SSDs are the best, man. Um, so anyway, what happened, it created that commit locally. Um, it actually did take a little bit longer because it's a, a, a little bit bigger of a project. But the typical changes um, when you're changing one or, only two, one or two files are, is very fast. Um, so you can see that here, committed that locally. And you notice this bit, it says sync to share your changes with the server. So these are the types of things that we're doing in our UIs to help people understand, hey, this is, this is happening locally, mm. but you'll need to sync your changes if you want to share it with other people. Because um, so far it hasn't talked to a server yet. That's exactly right. This is all local. If I, you know, if you go down to the, you can go onto the local disk and you can see those changes there. Um, if we look at some of the other experiences we have, you can see that. So I see this unsynced commits. If I click on that, um, you can see this actually isn't, hasn't been published anywhere yet. So if I was working with, um, you know, any Git service, you could just enter a URL on there and you can publish that thing. Um, you could do that with Visual Studio Online, as well as third parties like, you know, things like GitHub and Bitbucket, other, mm -hmm. other popular Git hosters out there. So why would I choose Visual Studio Online? Why would I choose Visual Studio Online rather than use GitHub? Uh, Visual Studio Online is, I think, a great choice for, for small team, or any size team for that matter, that's looking for more than just version control. Um, you know, we've got Agile project management tools, some of the best that are out there. Uh, we've got integrated builds, um, and then just you know integration with a lot of other Microsoft services and products. Right. Um, so you know it, it it gives a lot. It's more than just source control. So. Okay. Um, so if we go back, um, I don't know if you have another project on here um, that we can connect to that has a, a, a Git project. But um, do you know if you have any on this no, uh, not, machine? Not on okay. this machine. Not on this one, but. If you were connected to uh, a project, let's go on here. Real you quick. could connect to one of yours. Okay, so let's go ahead and connect to a Git project. Um, I think there's one here, so we'll go select the team project. You got all kind of projects in here, huh? And we've got one here, demo mat git. Let's connect to that. 
And so this is a Git project, so we'll see, we see it here with a little bit different icon. And there's a little indicator here that says, hey, this thing has not been cloned yet. So with Git, because everything is distributed, the first thing you need to do is, is clone down a project. So actually, if I connect to it, we'll get prompted to, um, let me do a connect this way. It'll prompt me, hey, you need to clone this thing to get started. So this is some of the other things that we're doing in our uh, inside Visual Studio and Team Explorer to make it easier to get started developing and um, you know, kind of really help people along. So okay, let's clone this thing. Yeah, that looks like a good place to put it. So click OK. And that quick, the, the clone happened from the server. So now I've got the project, you know, the repository set up locally. This one doesn't have anything in it yet, but I could easily add, you know, a project into it like we saw before. Um, and you'll notice something different about this project. Um, I can see work items here in builds. Uh, if I go back to that other project, whoops, let me go to connect page. Uh, if I go to this repo, Notice there's no work items or builds. So that's that's some of the differentiation between an ordinary Git project, so one that would be local or hosted on a third party site, and one that is hosted inside Visual Studio Online or, or on your local team foundation server. Um, so it's, uh, you know, it's like I said before, it's more than just mm. source control. Um, so that was nice and easy to get up and running, and I think that um, gives people an idea of where we're at today. Yeah. I'd love to know where are we going to be tomorrow? And, uh, uh, there's a couple of things that I, I'm looking out for. A lot of people that have TFS love the chickens and they love <laughs> the my work. Yep. Um, are they coming anytime soon? I, yeah, I think so. I mean, our goal over time, and, and this is something that when we set out to build Git, uh, we had we were very clear, I think, about this with people was uh, Git is going to be a first. It is a first class citizen inside TFS and. Even though we, we, we've spent a lot longer building Team Foundation version mm -hmm. control, our goal is to bring Git up to that level. So experiences that we have in one, we want to have comparable experiences in the other. Um, you know, an example of something that we, we hear very often from Git users is uh, I need to be able to review my code, right? Code review. Mm -hmm. Code review is the feature that we have in Team Foundation version control, so you can you know, participate with other people, get their feedback on your code. Um, we're going to be building similar features inside of Git in the future. Um, You'll hear that often called in, uh, by Git users as pull request. That's uh, right. So that's a feature that we're planning to build um, so that so doesn't Git that, users can have that. So pull requests are different to the current way code reviews work in TFS. So what you're saying is we would likely have a different UI to achieve the same task. Yeah, that's right. I mean, we'll, we'll build something that is specific to this, the, the particular workflow. Mm -hmm. um, so in the case of you know, pull request, uh, it's slightly different than the way a code review would work in a non-distributed version control system. So, uh, we, we would build the right experience uh, for for the for the platform for you know for Git. Um, that inconsistency will hurt hurt sometimes when you switch between one and the other. If you're familiar with one, it's a little different than the other. Would you refactor the current one to? Maybe do it. I think that's a good point. Mm. You know, something we try to do is maintain that mm. consistency. Mm. Um, I think we will certainly do our best to make it so it's not that painful switching. Right. Um, but of, of, in cases, it will be unavoidable. There will be need to be small, slight differences, but we'll do our best to kind of refactor things as appropriate and, and kind of unify the user experience between the two things. But we don't want it to be identical because they're not identical systems. They're different and they yeah. have their own merits and um, they'll be you know a little bit different. But where it makes sense, we should keep them similar. Okay. Um, one uh, kind of not exactly related thing, but I wouldn't mind asking you. A lot of people, I, de devs I see, don't use my work, mm -hmm. and it's, it appears that they're not aware. Mm -hmm. um, and once they're shown, they're aware, mm -hmm. but they get used to checking in and then assigning what work on them. Sure. But my work kind of solves that by saying, this is what I'm working on, right. and when you check in, it's painless. Mm -hmm. um, would you ever consider things like in the UI that would show you, hey, you're working on code, but you haven't told us what you're working on. Why don't you go to my work? And and will you do anything like that for the Git user? So they're encouraged to use work items because they use work items much less than, than TFS users. Sure, yeah, I think it's very interesting. You know, my work is one of those features that we, we haven't yet brought to Git. Um, you know, we're still fit planning and figuring out um, what does that mean for, for a Git user? But I think that's certainly things that we'll consider. I think it's a good idea to, um, you know, you can see, for example, here on the screen where we're saying that installing the third-party tools, right? We mm -hmm. give you those prompts to help users understand and discover new features and other ways of working. 
Um, so, you know, I think this is just kind of the gradual improvements that we're doing to Visual Studio over time to make it easier and friendlier to use, um, you know, for, for, for TFS and just Visual Studio in general. So, um, yeah, I, I do think that we will, you know, add, make it easier to use our products as time goes on. So. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Matt. This yeah. has been a great um, intro to getting up and running on Git, and uh, I look forward to what we see in the next 12 months. Yeah. Great. Happy to be here. Thanks, Adam. Okay. And with that, this is Adam Kogan signing off for SSW TV. Did you get all that? We'll take the SSW TV quiz and test your knowledge now. <laughs>